Hi everyone, uh, this is Professor Philip Travis and welcome to Military History here at Eastern Oregon University. Uh, this is our welcoming announcement. I want to introduce you to some aspects of the class. I'll talk a little bit about this picture here uh, as well as the assignments for this, this coming week as well as some of the basic things you need to know when it comes to succeeding in this course, which again is Military History here at Eastern Oregon University. So my name is Philip Travis. A little bit about me, I did my PhD at Washington State University. I've been teaching with Eastern Oregon University since 2014. Um, I'm the author of a book uh, related to military and foreign policy history or diplomatic history. The name of the book was Reagan's War on Terrorism in Nicaragua. I've also authored a number of, of academic articles uh, as well as book reviews. And it's my pleasure um, to be uh, teaching military history and taking us through this really, really important, uh, this really important subject. And in this class, we're going to really focus on American military history, even though one of our first assignments, as this picture um, suggests, is actually connected to Chinese military history some over 2,000 years ago. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But this class is primarily going to focus on American military history, particularly since the emergence of the Industrial Revolution. Now, we are going to talk about the American Revolution. But after the American Revolution, we're really going to focus on the American Civil War, the First and, of course, the Second World War, the Vietnam War, and then the 21st century wars of the global war on terrorism, um, particularly Iraq and Afghanistan. And we're going to consider, in this class, we're going to consider the experience of warfare for those who have fought um, for the United States, who have served for the United States. We're going to consider, we're going to consider um, war from societal and cultural levels. We're going to consider how industrialization has transformed warfare how the emergence of the United States as a global power has led to its involvement in a number of wars. Um, so we are going to be looking at this from a number of different angles. Now in the class, there will be two exams. There will be a midterm exam and a final exam. And there are two papers. And uh, th those are the biggest chunk of your grade, the midterm exam, the final, in both of the papers. One of those papers is four pages. One of those papers is two pages. In, in this course, we have a number of different items we're going to be reading, and those are related to these papers. So we have a textbook, which we'll be reading every week. Every week. That's the Ways of War book. And then we have three uh, readers, I guess I should say, historical monographs about the Second World War in the Pacific, the Vietnam War, and then the current or um, more recent 21st century wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So the first paper, the four-paged paper, so your two books, the one in World War II and the one in Vietnam, those books, you have E.B. Sledges with the Old Breed, which is one of the real iconic uh, works of uh, the Second World War, particularly the Pacific Theater, and you have A Rumor of War by Philip Caputo about the Vietnam War. And that's also a really iconic um, uh, first-hand account. Both of them are first-hand accounts of the American experience in these two conflicts. The first paper, which is a four-page paper, you are going to write a four-page paper that basically you read both of these books and you need to locate what you find to be a consistent theme from both of those authors and write a paper that um, explains that theme and uses evidence from those books to uh, support your, your thesis. Um, and of course, there's an explanation, a written explanation of these papers in modules and also at the end of the syllabus. The second paper is by Brian Glenn Williams. It's titled Counter Jihad. He was he served in Iraq and Afghanistan in the 21st century. And the sub that paper is only two pages in length, and that's due during finals week. And that paper will ask you to address um, some of the core topics in the book Counter Jihad, particularly answering the question, according to Brian Glenn Williams, why, in fact, 
did uh, the terrorist attacks of September 11th occur, and what are some of the common sort of myths about um, America's involvement in particularly Iraq and Afghanistan that Brian Glenn Williams sort of uh, uh, gives light to, uh, reveals, if you will. And of course, written explanations are in uh, at the bottom of the syllabus and also within modules. In this class, again, there's a midterm and a final. We'll talk more about those as we get there. On the midterm and final, you'll have multiple choice, true, false questions. You'll also have um, an essay that should be writing on both of those, and I'll talk more about those as we get closer to those assignments. There are also weekly quizzes in the class from the readings or the lectures, and uh, every week there's a discussion forum, a graded discussion forum. So the discussion forum requirements are that you make one post and you reply twice to classmates. These are the basic requirements. I want you to post first or reply no later than Thursday by midnight. Then on another day, reply and post. I want one post, two replies over two separate days. You could make your first post on Tuesday and reply on Thursday and you'd be fine. You could post on Thursday and reply on Saturday and you would be fine to fulfill those requirements as long as your post and your replies are respectful and substantial and they're drawing on the readings, the assigned materials, and the lectures in the class. Uh, now for lectures, as, as I've kind of been mentioning, every week I will have, in addition to assigned materials like documentary films and readings, I will have a recorded lecture. It's a PowerPoint video lecture that relates to an aspect of the material that we're dealing with. And some of these materials, um, in some cases, will come from places that I myself have visited, particularly when we get to the E.B. Sledge book in World War II. I will have a, um, a special video for you from Okinawa, which I've been fortunate enough to tour uh, many of the of the World War II sites and memorials in Okinawa and I can uh, I will um, have a, a little video lecture from that site for you when we get to that subject so every week there is a video lecture every week I have a video announcement like this every week there's a discussion forum there are quizzes almost every week and in the middle of the term we have our midterm we have a final at the end of the term, and there's two papers, a four-pager and a two-pager. Again, with the details are in modules, and they're at the end of the syllabus. Navigating the class, just go through modules. If The home page, you have my information on the home page, the syllabus. But then when it comes to moving through the class, really all you need to know is following modules. Every week, I will publish the next week's module. I will do that on Sunday. And so the first thing you do is go through the Getting Started module. Then week one will open up. When week one is finished, the Sunday before week two, I will open the next module. And you'll have the readings and assignments and the discussion forum, the video lectures, the announcements, and these types of things in there. Now, I want everybody watching these announcements every week. I want you obviously doing all the material. I want you watching the lectures because uh, it's really going to help us learn uh, in this class. But I want everybody, first of all, to watch these announcements at the beginning of the week. And so to encourage you to do that, because this is where I'm going to get you kind of up to speed with what's going on in the class. What are we doing? Uh, I'll talk about some of the assignments. And I'll also talk a little bit about history. And so... In order to encourage you to watch these uh, video announcements, I offer extra credit with these announcements. And I'll be finished in just a second. I know we're getting close to 10 minutes here. But what I do is for watching these video announcements, I offer an extra credit activity. And the way this extra credit activity works is you will get a bonus point. Every time you watch and respond to one of these announcements, there's a bonus point towards a test score That'll be added at the end of the term. Now, how does this work? The way this works is in these announcements, I will tell you about an interesting historical factoid that's related to um, the subject that we're covering for the week. And I take all of those bonus points and I add them to one of your test scores. So there's a potential here for 10 bonus points added to an exam score at the end of the term. 
which by the way is significant. We're talking about almost three grade points. So you watch these video announcements, watch them at the beginning of the week so that you have a feeling for, for what we're doing in, in the class. You're getting started early. Um, you're going to get a heads up on things related to the test and papers and these types of things. And so watch these announcements so you know what's going on in the class. And at the end of the term, you do all of them. You're talking 10 bonus points, the equivalent of basically three grade points. So the factoid for this week is related to the statue you see in this picture here. This is a statue of Sun Tzu, who, of course, um, Sun Tzu's, when exactly Sun Tzu existed is up for some debate. But Sun Tzu, of course, was the famed uh, military strategist who wrote the iconic work, The Art of War. And we're going to be reading from The Art of War this week. Everybody's been assigned a different section of the book. That's in the readings and assignments page. Everybody has a different section based on the alphabetical position of their name. And we're going to be reading this and discussing this in the discussion forum this week. Sun Tzu, we believe, historians believe, probably lived during a period a little over 2,000 years ago, a period called the period of warring states, which was a period of unrest in China in which there was kind of continual civil wars between different powerful states within China that were vying for influence in the country of China. And Sun Tzu wrote his famous treatise, The Art of War. Interestingly, of course, this is a highly influential work, still influential to uh, uh, those involved in diplomacy and military strategy and these types of things today in the 21st century, over 2,000 years later. Interestingly, as you will you'll, you'll realize in reading, it's a short read, by the way, so I'm not asking you to read a huge book. Um, it's actually translated. It's like 40 pages or something. But you don't even have to read all of it. You're just reading sections. Um, but interestingly, and this is the factoid, Sun Tzu, the author of, of The Art of War, that actually wasn't his birth name. That was an honorary title. And interestingly, the art of war, much of the art of war, has to do not necessarily with war itself, but rather ways that conflict can be avoided. Uh, the use of spies, strategy, um, these types of things. In addition to actual battlefield engagement, much of the art of war is about sort of outsmarting uh, your enemy. Um, rather than exactly what happens when combat occurs, though there is that. So the factoid is, is that Sun Tzu's art of war, while it is about war, is perhaps less about the combat itself and more about how you outsmart an opponent. So the factoid for this week, Sun Tzu, the art of war, which we'll be reading this week. And this is a statue of Sun Tzu, uh, an imagined statue, of course. Of course, it's very difficult to know um, how he looked. And in fact, um, there's debates over when exactly he lived in, in, in China. But uh, Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War, which we'll be reading this week. I'm sorry this was a long announcement. They all won't be this long. It's the welcome announcement. Let's have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you in the discussion forum. I get involved in the discussion forum. Yes, replying to me counts towards the requirements in the discussion forum. So I'll see you in the discussion forum. Let's have a great week, and I will see you in the discussion forum.